in this analysis lesson, what we're going to talk about are basically two things. So if you scroll down on our syllabus to analysis two, um, what this essentially is going to cover um, is some background that you might need to get started with the cases four and five. Now, I don't want to give away the whole, you know, big secret for case five before we get there, but um, before you've had a chance to think about it, because doing that denies you the opportunity of, of starting to practice and develop your problem solving skills and your critical thinking. Um, this first activity, case four, is really not actually analysis, because for one thing, remember, we don't show the trial balance it's, uh, to anybody. It's, a, it's an internal document just as part of the accounting cycle to balance before, to make sure things are okay before we move on. Um, some of you are gonna start to have encountered these problems that your trial balance does not balance and you've gotta go back and start start to look for some things. So uh, in about two seconds, we're gonna give you some tips about how to do that, which is what this case number four is about. The other item is really what you should start, what, what you should be interested really in, in accounting, because as, as it turns out, most CPAs, most um, chartered professional accountants don't actually do what you're doing. What you're doing is actually bookkeeping. It's doing the uh, recording the transactions, using them to produce financial statements, and then for the most part so far, you've been done with that. But most CPAs don't actually do bookkeeping. Um, it, it's really like by the end of this course you will be able to do bookkeeping right they do analysis they make decisions based on financial information so case five we're starting to get into actually using not just making balance sheets but using them to do analysis um, and so i'll give you a few tips on that to help you get started um, but not too many we'll, we'll do the rest in the take up so back to case four trial balance when you discover a trial balance does not, so actually before I even get into that, just understand that your trial balance may in fact balance and you may still have made mistakes, right? If you record a transaction that balances, but you put the values in the wrong accounts, it, you're still, you've still made a mistake, but the trial balance will balance. But if it does not balance, there are some things you can do. So first is if, let's say for example, you're off by $500. The first thing you can do is look for a transaction worth $500 because it's quite possible you just put it in the wrong account or you recorded the debit and then you just forgot the credit, for example, right? Second, and this might take some explanation, look for half the difference. And here's why. Let's say you got a cash, um, you got a cash account with, uh, let's say $1,000 in it, right? And we're gonna do two examples, the right way and the, the not right way. So on the left, we'll say is the right way. So let's say you have a transaction for 250 and you are supposed to, to debit into cash and you do. And so you'd end up with a debit balance in your cash account of 1250, right? But if you made the wrong entry and put it on the wrong side, right? And you credit the 250, you're gonna end up with a debit balance of 750. Now take a look at those two numbers. You should see something, right? They're $500 off. Why? Well, because you did the opposite effect. So you're not just off by 250 because you didn't do the 250. You did the 250 in the wrong direction. So if you, for example, if you're, here's your starting point and you were supposed to add 250, but in fact, what you did was you subtracted 250. Well, guess what? Here's where you're supposed to be and here's where you're where you are, you're, you're gonna be off by $500, right? So if you can't find the value that you're off by in your trial balance, right? So you look for 500, you can't find it, look for half that amount, look for 250. Third, see if the difference is divisible by nine evenly. And that's quite simply because of the way our number system works. So for instance, if, if you're off by say, for, I'll just do a demo, let's say you got 91, but instead of writing 91, you wrote 19. So you flipped the digits side by side. Well, 91 minus, what's called a transpositional error. 91 minus 19 is a difference of 72. And if you divide 72 by nine, you will get an even eight. So a transpositional error like that will always be divisible by nine evenly. So that's your next trick. And then your last trick, unfortunately, is not a trick at all. You're done with the shortcuts and you gotta start going through your transactions to find any mistakes. So, we, because most transactions involve payment or the obligation to pay, you start with your cash account, your accounts receivable, and your accounts payable because they hold the most stuff and are likely going to hold the, 
the most errors. This brings us to case five. I'm not going to really spill the beans yet. I'm not going to give away everything. I'm just going to give you some things that you probably want to think about, which you could probably already come up with yourself. So what do you know about the balance sheet? How you're supposed to make it? Not just, you know, things are supposed to be on the same line, like the totals are supposed to be on the same line, but actual um, information about how old or young things are or how useful they are. Think about that. Or when they have to be paid. Right? That the ordering of accounts means something. And then think about just common sense. What do you use to pay debt with? Think of those two things and, and timelines in terms of ranking accounts when you look at these two different companies to determine their financial position. So, and, and come up with a recommendation between the two of them, which one's in a, in a better um, situation. And as in real life, you should find that there is no clear cut answer. Some one of these two companies, company A or company B, has some pros and cons. Uh, they both have pros and cons, in other words. What you might want to do, uh, I will recommend maybe organization. You might want to say, for look at company A, for example. If you're looking at company A, you may want to come up with a, a, an advantages um, column and a disadvantages column and do something like this. So what are some... Um, good things about and remember what you're analyzing is all you can analyze with a balance sheet which is position so in other words what they own what they owe and what they're worth those are really sort of and especially these two because this is a calculation between these two things right what you own and what you, what you own and what you owe and remember that o is a legal obligation to pay and what are you going to use to pay what you owe and when is it due? So think of some pros and think of some cons. And then you might also want this. Uh, I, we'll call it a mitigating or risk factors. And what that means is things that would mitigate or risks to your assessment. So in other words, if you said, hey, this company's got lots of cash and will probably have lots of cash um, for the next year or two, what would present a risk to that consideration, to that item being an advantage, right? In other words, something terrible could happen and the cash would go away and then they wouldn't have lots of cash on hand. So pros and cons and then things that could then undo that opinion. And then you gotta kinda at the end, you gotta take the whole thing together, come up, synthesize it and come up with a, an opinion. Which company's better off and why? What are the key, maybe, I don't know, three things that you want to highlight? And then do that for each firm. That might be a good approach. Give it a shot.